We're working on an air conditioner here today and the symptoms were that it wouldn't start at all. The Both the fan and the compressor? The fan and the compressor were both not starting yeah. and the compressor was drawing locked rotor amps. Yeah, meaning that this was not able to spin and if we look at the locked rotor amps rating on the side, what was 73. it? 73. 73 amps somewhere on that sticker there. It says right there, 73 LRA. Yep, 73 amps. Just want to take a second and show you guys these lights that Thrunite sent over. This is the Thrunite Catapult V6. These things are really high quality lights. It's an aluminum body and it has a really tight throw on this. It can throw all the way up to 750 meters at 1,700 lumens. It's rechargeable via micro USB for the lithium ion cell that it uh, uses. And if we go ahead and just turn it on, we can very easily see that beam even though it is the middle of the day. So if you guys want to check these out for yourselves, the link will be right underneath this video. And then if you want to learn a little bit more, I will come back and talk about these and show you a demonstration of how they work at the end of this video. So instantly you would almost assume or you could incorrectly assume that the compressor is bad or that something is majorly wrong with the compressor. When in actuality it's a simple fix because after checking the capacitor this thing is shot. It's not showing significant signs of bulging or anything, but it is not working. So we're getting the correct replacement here. This one that we had temporarily installed is a 370 volt capacitor, just meaning that that capacitor can handle up to 370 volts. The new one that we're putting in right now is the proper one, and it is rated up to 440 volts. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And we will show you how to check capacitor volts here in one minute once we start this thing up again. Uh, but it basically has to do with just what the capacitor is rated to handle. Uh, the reason that we uh, went ahead and started it up with the um, smaller rating capacitor was we were just testing temporarily to see that the compressor would indeed start, which it did. So this one is technically rated for 370 volts. You said it was running like 395 volts, is that right? 395 to 400. Yeah. So right here, wait one second, let's do it again. We can see that our rating there is 35.5, meaning 35 MFD for the compressor and 5 MFD for the fan. 440 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. So uh, before you would install this, uh, you would obviously have the power disconnected coming to the unit, and then you can short out the wires on the top of the capacitor using a metallic object. All that was done previously, and so we are ready to install this. Now unfortunately the old capacitor was larger so we're going to have to mount this thing in here in a different way probably so that it for sure won't fall out and short out. Most likely we're just going to lay it sideways maybe use a zip tie or something like that to secure it in place. Uh, so we are ready to fire up the unit and just test it to make sure that it works and we'll check that it has less than 440 volts on the uh, common to the herm. So real quick on top of here just to explain again uh, these two orange wires, uh, those are connected to what we would call the common. And you can tell that it's the common because it has a tap directly off of the contactor, typically, that powers the common. This orange wire coming off of here likely goes to the fan. Does it go to the fan? No. The orange wire goes to the compressor? Uh, well, actually, I don't it, know. It goes to the fan. It goes to the fan. Yep. Yeah. So they just have That's tapped power. this orange wire off of the common terminal as a convenient place to basically supply power to the one side of the fan. This orange wire right here could be connected. What? Careful, this still has 24 volts on it. Sorry, these two. 24 not volts, one. not 240, right? 24, yep. yeah. Um, these these two in. wires right here, the yellow and the brown, are coming from the uh, thermostat and ultimately the transformer inside of the furnace or air handler. So there's still 24 volts present here, but our 240 volts has already been disconnected. What I was going to say is that this orange wire that's connected to the common right here could be moved right to that empty terminal right next to that red connection right there, and it's the same exact thing. It's just that they use that common spot as a convenient place to tap power off of. So from that common to the fan is our 5 MFD for the uh, fan capacitor, and then from the common to the herm is the capacitor for the compressor. So when we check, when we check capacitor volts, we'll be checking from the common to the herm for the compressor portion, and we'll also check from the common to the fan to see what the capacitor volts are for that. So we'll go ahead and 
get this thing fired up and then we'll give it a quick test. Start it up perfectly. The electric meter is in volts alternating current as you can see right there. So Ruben's gonna probe it, see what it's doing. There it is. 403 volts. And yep, so 403 volts, you're testing the same thing. So that's the capacitor volts for the compressor portion of that capacitor. Now we're gonna check it for the we're just looking at the voltage coming into the or coming out of the contactor, 240 volts. Let's check the fan from the fan to the common. So that's very similar, 395 uh, volts. So uh, it's important to note this so that you know that you have the right size capacitor. Typically, we wouldn't test that because as long as you replace the capacitor with a, a capacitor that has the same voltage or higher, we got 25 volts there? Yeah. 25 volts is the control voltage is going to the electromagnet coil that pulls that contactor in to turn the unit on. Uh, anyway, as long as you replace the capacitor with one that is the same or larger, as far as its voltage rating, you're gonna be good to go. But sometimes, a 440 volt capacitor will be installed in place of a 370 and the only way to know if you could put a 370 back in is to actually check the capacitor volts while the system is running. Obviously this, is, this condenser needs to be cleaned so that's something that will be addressed shortly. I just wanted to explain the relationship between a locked rotor amp, compressor, or a fan that is not starting and a bad capacitor so as well as the capacitor volt situation. All right, well thank you guys for watching that service call with Ruben and I. If you guys wanna see Ruben's channel, I will link that in the description. And then if you wanna keep learning about air conditioning with me, I'll put a link right up here to a playlist so you can jump out of this video right now and go over there if you want to do that. Otherwise, if you guys wanna learn a little bit more about this particular flashlight, let's go ahead and do that right now. So again, this is the Thrunite Catapult V6 and this is a really nice spotlight style flashlight. Now that's what I'm calling it. I don't know if that's a technical correct term or whatever, but it has this nice side switch for activating the light and there is not a tail switch. So there's nothing to worry about accidentally pressing on the back side of the flashlight. It's just this side switch right here. Now a quick double tap brings on turbo mode and then if I press and hold it, it should cycle through the different brightness options. Now if you want to put it into strobe mode, you simply double click to put it into turbo first and then double click one more time. And then it enters into that really powerful strobe mode which is kind of a, a feature that you can use in a defensive sort of situation. As you can see, I've taken apart the black one. So there you can see the 5000 milliamp hour uh, lithium ion battery that the flashlight utilizes. They also include extra o-rings to protect the water resistance of your light over the long run as well as a holster which is actually pretty decent quality. So if you like to put your light in a holster all this stuff right here is included in the kit. Alright let's go ahead and take a quick look at the nighttime test so you guys can kind of see how that throw looks at night. So Freya's just in the spill of the light right now. See the really hot spot there. But you can kind of use the spill to kind of have general purpose lighting. Well, it does have the bright spot in the middle, but it spreads out enough that you can kind of see the, the area surrounding the light instead of just where the hot spot is, which is actually really nice. So here's the dimmest mode. Almost can't see it on the camera very well low, medium, and high. 
And on that high mode, it really throws a long ways. Really, really nice. You can also see low, medium, and on high, you can tell that it lights up you know, the, the area around the tree enough to where my camera is able to pick that up a little bit better. And finally, here are the actual details. You guys can pause and read through if you want to see exactly how bright and how long. You can see that maximum turbo setting of 1,700 lumens and maximum throw of 750 meters. So overall, this is something that I would recommend. I think that this could fit really well into your tool belt for an HVAC technician or electrician. Otherwise, if you want to use it for camping or for hunting, this green version right here has a really nice dark finish to it. And obviously with that button being black and this outer rim being black, that helps a little bit with making it a little bit less um, flashy, I guess you could say. On the black one here, that button is silver and this outer ring is silver. So really, really nice lights. Um, Again, link in the description for these and you guys can check those out. Uh, if you do purchase one of these, 10% of your order will go to support the channel. And so I really appreciate Through Night for sending these over and I really appreciate your guys' support if you do decide to buy one. All right, if you guys want to keep learning with me, I'll put a couple of videos right here on the screen. YouTube thinks you want to watch this one, whereas this one I think would be the most applicable. If you guys want to subscribe to Ruben's channel, I'll put his uh, link right here. Definitely go over there and subscribe. We're trying to get him to a thousand subscribers so that he can uh, monetize and start making more YouTube videos for you guys in the future. All right, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you right over there.